All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, Morse functions. And uh, these are basically a class of uh, functions which are uh, nice in some sort of sense. Um, so, so let me say a little bit about this idea of uh, generic smooth functions. Okay. Um, and so the basic idea is that um, we're going to consider functions on basically manifolds um, which encode in some sense things which are uh, structurally stable. Okay, so we're going to consider uh, functions on manifolds. <coughs> um, that are sort of somehow nice and encode uh, sort of structurally stable things. Sort of stable information about the manifold. And <clears throat> Let me try to illustrate this idea uh, with an example. It's like instead of being uh, too technically precise. It, um, and so let's illustrate this uh, with the example. So let's consider uh, the upright torus. Okay, so what I mean is that you have uh, something like a donut, but it's standing upright. Okay, and imagine <coughs> it's. Uh, on a surface. Um, so M is a two torus. Okay. Uh, and you can think of function F, it's like from M to the rails, um, which is really just the height function. Okay. <coughs> um, so this takes a point. X and returns the height, for example. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, so this is just the height function. Okay. And um, so for each number. Uh, you can talk about the uh, level set associated with that. So for a particular height, let's call that A, you can look at the set of points. Uh, maybe let's sort of move it a bit further up. Okay, so you can look at the set of points uh, which have that height value. Okay, and that thing is what is called uh, a level set. Okay, so there's the level set. Okay. So for each real value A, right, we can consider the level set. Which is just a pre-image. So it's just uh, f inverse of a. Okay. Right. So so these are just a set of points. It's like on a manifold which have a particular value. Okay, function value. Okay. Um, and then uh, the other thing it's like you can introduce with that is what is called the sublevel set. Okay. Um, so. Um, let me just denote this by MA. Okay, so this is the following pre-image. It's pre-image now of, um, say, the interval from minus infinity to A. <coughs> so what that basically means, it's that it's the set of points with, uh, in this case, the height, which is uh, less than equal to A. Okay, all right. So this is the set of points uh, X in the manifold with the property that function value at that point x is less than equal to a. Okay. 
Okay, so this is what's called the sublevel set. Okay, and basically what's going to happen then is that um, <coughs> if you can construct it's like a function, it's like on a manifold, which is somehow nice, uh, and we're not again going to be too precise about this right now. Then what happens then is that this um, sort of the sublevel sets associated that function um, will give you will encode some sort of topological information uh, about the manifold. In particular, knowing how that uh, sublevel set changes um, as you vary a, it's like gives you some interesting information. It's like about the topology of the manifold. Okay. Um, so, so let's see, let's think about this, right? Um, so maybe let's draw that hole a little bit um, sort of more clearly. All right, so let's maybe draw it like this. Okay, and then um, there are certain critical values um, of the um, height function, right? There's the value associated with the bottom point. There's the value associated with this point, which is sort of the <coughs> lowest value or the lowest height of the hole. So let's call it u, v. Uh, there's the value associated with the sort of the top of the hole, right? And then there's the value associated with the top of the torus. Okay, u, v, w, and z. Okay, so, um, and then the basic idea then is that at these critical values, right, the nature of the sublevel set from the point of view of topology changes uh, as you sort of increase these values, okay? Um, okay, so, um, so let's see how you do that. Um, I'm just going to erase these definitions and then sort of draw pictures for you for what's happening inside between these critical values and more or less what they look like. So, um, so between the value, um, okay, so, so for a less than um, f of u, um, okay, so these are the points, I guess, is maybe the best way to think about it, okay? So if a is less than f of u, that means the value is less than this lowest point here, right? Then you know that uh, ma is the empty set. Okay, so there's nothing interesting happening there, right? And then for A, which is between uh, F of U and F of V, right? You get something which, I mean, you get a domain which looks a little bit like this, right? So you get something which looks maybe like a bowl, if you will, okay? So, uh, and you can convince yourself that topologically this looks like uh, a disk, right? So MA has the topology of a disk, right? Um, which, of course, is a contractible space, so it has the homotopy type of a point, right? Okay, and then um, the next thing is that um, if you sort of go between uh, sort of V and W, so you have F of V, A is between F of V and F of W, right? Then uh, you, this part here pinches off and then you get sort of the, the two arms. So you get something which looks a little bit like this. Right, <coughs> and um, this is a cylinder, right? So this looks like a cylinder. So MA is uh, is sort of topologically a cylinder. Okay, 
And then the cylinder, it's like has the homotopy type of a circle because you can contract, it's like uh, along the sort of the length of the cylinder just to get a circle, right? This has the homotopy type of a circle. Okay, um, and then uh, finally, it's like, well, not finally, but between um, the f of w and f of z, right? So, okay, so f of w, a between f of w and f of z, right? Then you get something which looks like this. Actually, no. Okay, so this part is filled in. <coughs> All right. Um, so this has, um, it's a torus basically. So this is a torus with a disc removed. Right. Okay, and it has the homotopy type of a figure eight. Okay, and then obviously it's like when A is uh, less than F of Oh, it's greater than f of c, so <coughs> f of c is less than a, right? Then you just get the torus. This, well, so m a is a torus, right? So m a is oh, okay. So m a is a the m a is the torus. It's like when this removed. It's like when you have a between f of w and f of z. It's like and when a has value greater than f of z, and ma is just a torus, right? It's a torus. So again, the basic idea, if you will, is that when you look at this function, it's like a manifold, which is uh, somehow nice, uh, what is going to be called a Morse function. And, and so I haven't really pr uh, precisely defined for you what I mean by that Morse function being nice. Um, uh, in any case, the bottom line is that you, when you look at that nice real valued function it's like on the um on the manifold it's uh and you look at the sublevel sets then there are going to be these critical points um where the um sort of the topology if you will of the sublevel sets change okay um so this then gives you a, a very uh, nice way if you will it's like of uh, encoding uh information about the manifold if you will okay um so, um, yes, so actually let me just stop here for a minute.